Let's get ready to rumble! Let's, uh, let's start, I think. Yeah. Welcome in the last episode of 2021 uh, for the HR Tech Back-to-Back -back series. Uh, this time the topic is um, engagement and internal communications. For those who don't know me, I'm Hans Marcels of HR Tech Valley. And um, uh, on the screen on the left, right, or it depends, on, top of, I think. on top of me, it depends, <laughs> is uh, Stephanie of Thomas More, who is my uh, official, uh, the ring official today. And she has two speakers uh, to introduce. Stephanie, who do you have? We have today, we have the pleasure to have Cedric with us and Patrick. Cedric, you'll start, right? No problem. Okay. So, um, Cedric, he's, a, I think, a passionate entrepreneur, what I can see from LinkedIn and from the small talks we had. And I can speak uh, from experience. Um, I work as a freelancer as well, but also here at Thomas More, we communicate via SharePoint, Teams Chat, Skype Chat, WhatsApp, um, multiple tools, and it's very confusing. And me, Roger, is the tool who can fix this. Right, Cedric? The floor yes. is yours, I would ask. like to ask yeah. everyone to switch off the cameras and the mics so that Cedric gets all attention. Yeah, all right, okay. Now, uh, thank you for the introduction. Indeed, I am uh, Cedric Fikauta, the founder of Meet Roger, and the introduction is correct. We help companies in streamlining their internal communication, and therefore we use an uh, out-of-the-box uh, platform, uh, which is, uh, really very different uh, if you compare us with uh, existing tools like in the SharePoint email, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, I have found the company back in 2016 uh, with one purpose, to help streamline internal communications for companies uh, with a very fragmented decentral uh, workforce, especially working with blue collar workers because that's our sweet spot to reach them, to connect them, to engage them. And Inform, Connect, Engage is indeed our most important tagline because that is who we are, that is what we do uh, with a lot of energy and enthusiasm indeed. Um, there is a specific reason why we have found the company. Um, five reasons uh, to be a little bit more uh, focused because communication on a uniform way for white and blue collar workers is today in the most common sense not possible for a lot of companies. In fact, for 99% of the companies, it's not possible. Why? They use a lot of channels next to each other. And it's not only inter the internal communication department that uses all those channels next to each other. It's also HR, it's also operations, it's also uh, HSSE, it's also the entire management. So um, we, we communicate in silos and of course with Meet Watcher we want to uh, create uniformity, we want to create a clear uh, inclusive message. Um, what we also do is, of course, decrease the amount of channels you have to manage to push a message towards an end user. And we make communication profitable or smart via, of course, data insights and a clear overview. And that's our mission, our vision. And of course, we do that via our one in uh, one fits all platform that is accessible for you and old, digital dino, digital savvy. Uh, mobile first on a web application. We have multi-channel notifications, but I will talk about that within a couple of minutes. What's the most important you need to remember of Meet Watcher is the Inform, Connect, Engage your entire workforce. And if you are uh, communicating out of an HR perspective, you can really uh, increase employee engagement with 20 to 25 percent by using Roger, by analyzing, uh, analyzing the data based on your internal accounts and by acting with a lightning speed. Now, how does it work? Um, I have a, a very nice uh, use case uh, that I brought uh, with me uh, for Empat PSA. It's a very big port company in the port of Antwerp. Um, 4,000 employees, I think about 1,000 white collar people, administrative tasks, etc., etc. And then, of course, we have our technicians, we have our dockers, we have our boatmen, uh, drivers, etc., uh, etc. Et it's really like a very big fragmented uh, audience. And what's important to understand is that that company uh, did use in the past more than six, eight to ten channels to communicate towards uh, their employees. 
out of 13 departments and 13 communicators, each huge. Yeah? Of course, what uh, did we do? Uh, we've um, summarized it in three big milestones. The first step was, of course, we uh, made the evolution together with the customer from six to one channel. Uh, where 13 communicators were communicating uh, across a lot of platforms, they now manage it out of uh, Meet Roger. Yeah? So 13 communicators are collaborating together in one place. The second step is, of course, process optimization. If we talk about creating your message and sending your message and, of course, receive data, it's all been optimized by using Roger and, of course, use our methodology. And then, of course, step three is we, by using Roger, you can really evolve from purely communicating to conversating. Now, what's important to understand, we have a very clear value proposition. Our value proposition is we are a top-down oriented communication platform to reach every type of employee and increase employee engagement. We are not a chat tool. We are not a collaboration tool. And we are not a community tool. We deliver data insights to, of course, research your internal accounts, learn from it, and of course, uh, go towards your uh, employees and put in a better uh, conversation for tomorrow. Secondly, we have polls and surveys to facilitate and capture feedback, to do an employee satisfaction survey, uh, to really uh, give like uh, your employees a platform to discuss certain topics on a very anonymous, but straightforward and structured way. Yeah. Yeah. Value proposition. I think it's clear. Inform, connect, engage. It's who we are, what we do. Uh, maybe the topic energy would also fit uh, within this uh, value proposition because it's also important within our team. And of course, if you are in the ring with Patrick from Social Cedars and you want to give an uppercut, you need a lot of energy, of course. Now, how does it work? On a very practical way, I'm going to take you with me on the communication journey. So step one is, of course, you create content. If you create content on the old fashioned way, you will need to manage a lot of channels next to each other, email, newsletter, MailChimp, intranet, SharePoint, WhatsApp, Slack, uh, maybe some WeChat or TikTok uh, next to each other. It are a lot of channels. What we do is we make the job of the internal account manager very easy. Like you create your message on one spot in one editor on a multilingual way. We support today nine languages. I think for, by the end of Q1 2022, we will support 50 languages worldwide. Yeah. What you can do with the editor is, of course, create content, photo, video, documents, polls, surveys, et cetera, et cetera. Collaborate with colleague admins or communicators on that uh, kind of topics. And of course, plan it in your content calendar. Step two of your communication journey is, of course, who needs to receive this message? What is our target audience? If we cannot think about who will receive the message, how can we think about on the impact of the message? So targeting is, of course, one important piece of the puzzle to increase engagement. But you, 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 you need to have, of course, the capabilities. Roger offers those capabilities via our extensive criteria and uh, like uh, it's our end or not principle to create your preferred target audience. Like, for example, the blue collar workers in Antwerp, uh, who speak Dutch on the early shift. That could be a very uh, targeted uh, segmentation. Well, SharePoint does not offer that kind of segmentation. Email does, but a blue color do not read emails. So it's not always the perfect fit, and we try to give you the perfect fit. Of course, step three is how will the end user receive that message? Uh, we have to be honest and sure is that not everybody will download the Roger app. We know that from the beginning, from the start. That's also the reason why we have built Roger as a multi-channel application. Because the user can choose whether they receive notifications via the Roger app, the Roger web application, or via text message, email, or even WhatsApp notification. So if we penetrate the comfort zone of the end user, we create a higher adoption and activation rate. And that's the reason why young and old, why blue color access that easy the Roger platform, of course, with one goal to create more adoption and engagement. This functionality gives us the platform, uh, of course, to be a very good crisis communication tool. 
Like for example, there is an outbreak of uh, COVID-19 in plant C. So everybody in plant C needs to be tested or needs to go home, for example. Yeah? Uh, that, that can be <laughs> in these days, a very actual uh, internal comes crisis communication. And then last but not least, uh, of course, one, one of the biggest USPs is our engagement dashboard because we measure the impact of your communication plan. We measure the impact of your content that you have pushed towards particular target audiences, toward particular uh, employees. And here we make internal communication profitable. You can measure engagement, you can measure your content, you can create, analyze, and report KPIs. To close, um, yeah, of course, COVID-19 has uh, teached us a lot. Um, of course, blue collar workers also need the opportunity to receive or to have uh, documents in their pocket. That's the reason why we have optimized our document feature uh, that you can create, of course, directories, subdirectories. You can uh, give uh, yeah, different rights towards particular employees on different documents. So it's very flexible. And what's important to understand is that, of course, it's not a document management tool. It's not a new SharePoint. It's just an easy way to share documents with blue collar workers or your entire workforce, of course. Collect feedback and measure engagement. That was, of course, feature number one by day one and, uh, when we founded uh, the company back in uh, 2016. Because, of course, this is our business card. You can measure, capture feedback in a very easy, efficient way um, Yeah, to, to give a little bit of insights uh, within your human capital uh, in the in your company. Fast and easy onboarding, very important to understand. We do not have to integrate with anything else. Uh, we just have to receive data. Data extracted of your ERP, SAP, Active Directory, whatever. The only thing we need is last name, first name, cell phone number, last name, first name, uh, email address for white color. And then the first thing is, of course, for blue color workers. And on the day of go live, uh, blue collar workers will receive a text message from Hi, I'm Roger of Roger of some Blams. Um, and uh, I'm the new communication assistant. Please grant me access. And then they download the Roger app, they register WhatsApp or whatsoever. The average adoption within three months is 96 to 97 percent. It's like really a high speed train with a lot of energy, of course, to create a decent communication journey. Our adoption and big bang is always uh, based on one big bang. Whether you have uh, 5,000 employees scattered in seven countries, we will always go live with the entire workforce because we know the drill. Uh, if we talk about uh, campaigning, if we talk about uh, teasing, it's always important to launch in globally. Yeah. Of course, service is important for Roger. Uh, we do not only uh, give you a platform or uh, like just a SaaS uh, license. No, it's really... Uh, also, a strategic added value we bring with our price in, uh, in of course, the format of uh, live support and support uh, via our go live strategy. We have a built in help desk in Roger via, via live chat. Of course, we have also a support desk uh, based on email notification, etc. etc. And of course, a hotline when it's really a crisis communication. Plug and play, what do we mean by that? You, if you look at Roger, you can really uh, pose the, 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 the quote, like it's, it's the chameleon of internal communication. We change color based on the client. If the client wants to integrate like SAP with our back office, it's possible. But if the other company only wants to use Roger to communicate towards blue colors on a standalone way, it's also possible. So we can change colors, we can change of goals uh, a la tête du client. Yeah? That's important to understand because it's really an opportunity to stay flexible. We have multiple integrations and of course uh, with uh, Social Cedar, uh, for example, it's like our partner, despite the fact we are in the ring today, it's our partner uh, because they uh, love employee advocacy. We also love employees, of course, and that could be a nice bridge, but also with digital signage, play it safe, et cetera, et cetera, just to create an interconnected workspace. That's important to understand. This beautiful story we are now telling in 25 countries, uh, countries in nine languages. I only, I only talk three. I have very, I'm very fortunate that Miriam talks seven languages. <laughs> so it helps our growth strategy, of course. Uh, but that's, that's, that's a bit who we are and what we do. Um, a lot of uh, 
nice uh, things to share is, of course, yeah, if you have a fragmented uh, challenge, for example, for your company, and you can align with that, we create very nice use cases. Like, for example, Peter Scholbers is a very big entrepreneur here in Belgium in the food industry, 1,300 people working for him in different franchising uh, concepts. That's, of course, a very nice uh, quote of, uh, of uh, Jan Peters. But also uh, Van Boot Logistics in Port of Antwerp. Uh, also 1,400 employees scattered uh, over 26 uh, business units. It's huge. Uh, yeah, then you create, of course, like uh, very nice use cases to scale. And I think uh, that's about it. Uh, that's who we are, what we do. And of course, uh, it's uh, our passion. It's our life. Very clear. Thank you, Cedric. Let's Please. see if there are questions. I will pop on my... Camera. Yes, thank you. And I'm sure if the audience doesn't have a question, Hans will have one. I have one as well, Cedric. What? Because it sounds really promising, but do the people also have to change their behavior when they um, launch uh, Meet Roger? Like the way they communicate and. No, no, they only, I mean, yeah, of course, eh, the, the, the admins, the people who distribute and create communication, of course, they need to change their mindsets, like uh, take, uh, I mean, you cannot, uh, you cannot go further based on the old fashioned way, but you do not have to rethink your internal comms uh, topics, for example. It can be only like, for example, Merry Christmas, you push that today via SharePoint, email, WhatsApp, etc., etc., etc. Now you can create very nice message to the total company with two clicks. Yeah? So you need to change mindset mm -hmm. of the actual operational communication flow you have as in today. Mm -hmm. Then of course you have the opportunity to go strategically very deeper with your internal communication plan because you have the toolkit to do so. Right. But, but for the user- Yeah, so in that respect, the change uh, management is very small. Yeah, it's small, but we support that in the go live strategy. That's very important piece of the puzzle. We do not only deliver uh, great software, but we also deliver uh, great uh, support. I see Anne van Houten had uh, a question. I can uh, answer it. You should even. Ah, yes. <laughs> Perfect. So Anne van Houten had the question, is it only available for smartphone? No, it's not only available for smartphone. We also have a web application. The web application I will show you, give me one second, is in this format. It adapts based on tablet, PC, laptop. Uh, so your company logo uh, comes there, and then you request the code, like, for example, cedric at meetwatcher.io. Of course, you accept terms and conditions for GDPR, uh, privacy, compliance, et cetera, et cetera. You request the code. Now I'm going to go to my mailbox. Give me one second, please. I'm going to get the code. It's six numbers, copy paste, and then you're really live in the platform. All right. Wow. Thank you. So this this is in fact the way how you uh, engage on your, uh, for example, PC or laptop. You only have to do it once, and you are only gonna be logged out after thirty days inactivity. So it's in fact you can combine like two, three, four hardware pieces to use Roger. That's uh, not a problem at all. I hope that clarifies uh, enough, Anne. I see a question, my apologies. I see a question of uh, Steam Hall. What makes the Roger app a better choice rather than the company just choosing one communication platform themselves? I do not fully understand the question uh, because we yeah, don't- Yeah, like, I understand, I think like, is it not easier for a company just to decide, yeah, from tomorrow, we won't communicate over WhatsApp or Teams. We will just all use email, for example. Well, uh, yeah, no, uh, because else we wouldn't exist, of course. Uh, secondly, um, by doing, by making that decision and not giving a lot of options towards your entire workforce, you like uh, are, are, are convincing people to use some uh, perhaps a tool that they don't like. Like for example, if you if you decide we only choose uh, to communicate via email, you will lose all your blue collar workers. That's a fact because we know that uh, an email and a blue collar workers is not always a perfect match. For example, Roger does not only provide the Roger app because we also have the Roger web application. 
we have the opportunity to activate a uh, text message, uh, email notification or WhatsApp notification. That's just the strategy afterwards. But uh, Steam, what's important to understand is that you as an internal communication manager only need to use one tool to manage your entire internal communication. And that's the superpower of Roger. You do not have to manage your admin console of SharePoint, admin console, console of like MailChimp or Newsletter. You do not uh, need to uh, manage your admin console of your digital signage, your uh, WhatsApp accounts, etc., etc., because it's all happening in one place. You're welcome, Steve. And then I see also an answer of Am. So if I understand correctly, yeah, but he chooses the way of communication. Correct, Am. Um, yes, they choose WhatsApp, text message, email, Roger app, Roger web application, indeed. There's another question of Yunus Emre Aslam. Hi, how can you make the application white label? Can the company use it as a separate mobile application when its own name and logo in App Store markets? Yes, that's possible. We provide that support for companies based on a particular volume, not for every company. It's, uh, I think, uh, as of 300 to 400 people, we uh, activate the possibilities of white labeling. And then it's, of course, a little bit technical. If you are in Belgium, we distribute the apps in the Belgian App Store. If it's an international spectrum, uh, there are two options. We use Apple Business Manager. Android is very flexible based on that. We have no, uh, no uh, challenges there with Apple Business Manager. And for really international uh, companies who are active in like 15, 20, 40 uh, uh, countries, my apologies, uh, we use our contacts at uh, Apple Ile de France uh, because we have now access as Meet Roger team uh, to distribute unlisted uh, Apple uh, apps. That means that our apps fully white labeled but without activity in the App Store. It's like with the private link. We are, I think, one of the 15 companies in, uh, in Belgium now that uh, has that access. So we have a lot of flexibility, Yunus, for that. All right, Steam, uh, uh, the question, are there any sources that prove this, that labor workers, for example, don't like to use email? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Gartner, uh, Gallup, uh, there are a lot of international uh, studies that, uh, that support that, uh, that uh, reasoning uh, that like a blue collar worker is really focused on the mobile first way of living, like uh, reading the uh, soccer app, um, chatting with the, the, the home front uh, via WhatsApp, etc. Et we can really uh, uh, even share that with you if you like. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's, uh, it's really possible, Hans, to send voice messages, uh, but if you embed it in the editor, so like you cannot uh, in the uh, Roger app record voice messages instant, but you, if you have the file, you can, of course, distribute it via the platform, yes. All right. I, I think that was the final question. Cedric, it's clear the application is very powerful and it can be applied in, I think, any HR domain. So for the students who are looking for optimization of our company, many opportunities. I liked your message that it will be available soon in 15 languages. That sounds like challenging. Um, <laughs> but it's great to see the flexibility of the tool and also the focus targeting and as well as the dashboard. So. That's for me a takeaway. I thank you again for the time you took to speak with us. Thank you, Cedric. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Cedric. Thank you. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Cedric already made the smooth transition to social cedar. So we have now our second speaker with us, Patrick. And Patrick is the founder of um, Social Caesar, and they started in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, where they already believed that um, uh, you really need ambassadors for your company. And so they developed a tool and a way of, of really engaging your employees that they become natural ambassadors. If, if I'm recapping this rightly, but Patrick will explain this 
in during the next 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So let me share also my screen. Voila. Um, I, I hope you see it, something called Social Cedar Introduction. It is. Ah, uh, voila. Um, it's going to be part some slides, and if we have time, uh, I can I can really go very very quickly into the the platform because I think going into the platform is always nicer than just slides. Uh, so my name is Patrick. I'm CEO of Social Cedar. Indeed, started in 2014 based on the insights that um, people they listen to other people and people take decisions based on other people and not specifically based on what they see on publicity channels. So I come from the airline and tourism industry and we spent lots and lots of money on search engine advertisement and then we came to the conclusion that that worked for a bit but most impact came through people so that's when we started at this moment um, we are used uh let's say 90 percent in a hr technology or a hr environment where before when we started it was more marketing uh, so today companies they use us to create brand pride or to increase the brand pride internally and externally also for social selling that's something very specifically but um specifically more in employer branding and also now with COVID in easy recruiting uh, as you probably all know at this moment there's really really big big problems with engagement uh, following Gallup, only 15% of the people are engaged with remote due to remote working. 15% meaning 85% of the people of the people they are thinking eventually to go and work for another employer, which is creating lots of problems for uh, companies. So we are also a combination. Um, uh, we com combine a methodology with the SaaS platform, a bit the same as, uh, as uh, Cedric from from Heath Rogers. So that's what. We saw a very short introduction before I'm not the youngest anymore when I went to work and I opened the door of the bank because I had to go for, work for the bank in that time. It was like this. Um, when I opened the door, it, the private life was finished. And when I closed the door at five o'clock, uh, the private light started. There was no interaction. So the only thing you did at work was working and earning money. That was the only thing. Um, today it's completely different. We all know, and there's lots of young people around here that a company they need to have. Um, let me see. I don't see. I think that I can redo it a bit. Voila. A company needs to have values. They need to have a vision. They need to have much more than just you know here's the money and come and work for us. Uh, so they, there has to be an interaction between uh, the company and uh, the employees and also for the people that want to work. I mean, they want to attract people. They, they need to be attractive, not only in salary. What is more is that today, most of the companies are luckily also busy with uh, things like uh, inclusion, diversity, corporate social responsibility. So high value, we call it giving back to society. So we don't, as a company, only need to give value to our coworkers, but we need to give value to the society. Otherwise, we're not uh, uh, an, in, an interesting uh, company or because it's it's not, uh, at this moment, it's not in the culture anymore. Uh, but that, this puts also challenges. So in the meantime, we just saw that there's still the war for talent. It's heavier than ever, um, and it's very, difficult to attract talent uh, and also to keep them. I just uh, explained that. And so the only thing, not the only thing, but one of the things you need to do is to be authentic. And this is what we saw after seven years is if you create authentic content, you can create impact and impact creates relevancy. And this is what we do as Social Cedar. We try to give the tools to, to companies to create impact through an authentic voice and what is the authentic voice of a company it's not the publicity it's not the radio it's the people and why because 92 percent worldwide of people trust suggestions from family and friends imagine if everybody in your company starts to talk about your company what an impact would that be but what's the challenge the challenge is that in most of the big companies um and this is based on my hundreds and hundreds of contacts with companies, only 1% or even less of the co-workers proactively share content. It's not because they are not engaged. There's more than 1% engaged, otherwise you wouldn't run a company. 
but they don't do the effort, they don't know how to do this, it's too complex, they don't dare. There's so many reasons why people just don't communicate. Eventually in a pub they do, but they don't do it on social media. There's only a few people that do this, but suppose that at least, that's why 25% or plus, but suppose, imagine that 25% of your coworkers start talking about the company, its values, corporate social responsibility, what would be the impact? And this is why, this is our slogan, this is why we believe that a company's story has to be told by its employees. It's not, it shouldn't be, it can be told by the CEO, which, uh, but the most effective one is by the employees. What does uh, Social Cedar do, do? Because we will go into some details uh, in a minute. Um, we define also the strategy. This is part of our methodology and we support, we support sorry, um, uh, the companies in the use of the tool. But it all starts with the methodology uh, because the tool is nice, but it's not only the tool that will solve all your problems, obviously. So the first thing we do is always have a workshop with companies. We have this, by the way, every single year again, where we define the goals. Okay, I want to engage my coworkers spreading content. Why would you do this? Is this because you want to create more brand pride? Is it because you want to attract talent? Is it because you want to make more sales, which is also possible? Um, or is it because you just want to engage more people in your company? So what are the goals? The why? I think you all know a guy called Simon Sinek. The why is the most important thing in a company. If you ask people to involve and to do something, you have to explain the why. So we help the companies in defining the why. The why is why should I become an ambassador of my company? Recruitment, a bit the same as what Cedric explains. If you recruit people and you ask them to become an ambassador, you can segment them. It's only it's not only language. You can ask them what is your position, uh, what is your interest, so that at least the people receive the right uh, the right uh, content. Otherwise, you you waste your energy. Activation is your content. Okay, I'm going to activate my custom, my um, coworkers. But do I have a story to tell? And is the story in a certain frequency? Because if you want to create impact as a company, the frequency is very important. It does. I'm not saying that you have to do it every single day, but there has to be a solid uh, frequency. We too often see companies that stop, for instance, communicating during July and August. I don't know why, because no, uh, not everybody is on holiday and communication is like going to a pub. There needs to be a certain frequency. Engage is how do we make the, the, the how do we make our coworkers um, and, uh, that they keep engaged because we don't want just to start something and after three months we have to stop it because it didn't work. So you have to encourage people to stay on board. We do not do any type of gamification. It's not an influencer platform, but we do have community building, meaning we share results. Well, there's random acts of kindness. There's, for instance, LinkedIn trainings for the people that are on board, but it's not the first person that gets the iPad and all the rest doesn't get anything that will make your program work. So gamification is not only the not, not always the holy grail. Harvest our KPIs. What are the KPIs? Means what is a, re, a, a measurable result out of your um, employee engagement program? Um, and harvest could be I want to hire 30 people, 30 people thanks to the efforts of my coworkers. How it works? I'm going to, uh, if I, if yes, I will have a couple of minutes. I can very briefly explain. It's a platform. It's a white label platform, completely in the colors of the company. Um, and uh, I'm just going to end this first. People are using companies are using us to recruit right talent to keep the talent on board, to create, uh, to imp sorry, to reinforce their brand pride, uh, also to reinforce their corporate social responsibility uh, campaigns, or to make them known uh, to the public um, and also also to encourage salespeople to share because the more salespeople share for instance on LinkedIn the more they become a thought leader and the more you become a thought leader the more normally you sell we see in the meantime even companies that are um, choosing their talents based on their uh, network so the network of people becomes quite important uh, next to probably what, what, what what, uh, um, what you studied. Why social cedar? Um, we, have, we are that simple. We are that simple uh, for the ambassador. If you come on board 
I think it's also again similar to um, uh, Meet Roger. There's no training needed. Everybody can become an ambassador. You don't need to have any training on social media. It's so e easy that everybody can share. And because we send out in the meantime more than 150,000 campaigns, the data in our platform become very important. But that I will show you in a minute. Um, so this leads me to how the platform works. So suppose you started, we did our workshop, and based on the workshop, we defined the goals and the KPIs. Next thing to do is also GDPR-wise, you have to invite your people. So this is an environment of Atlas Coco. So at a certain moment, people are invited to join uh, the program. The why is explained. Why should I become an ambassador of uh, the program? Some questions and answers. And if I'm interested, I can just, uh, in this case, it's based on interest. But like I said, it could be interest. It could be what is your function. This is your segmentation. Suppose I'm interested in work style and culture. The only thing I have to do is first name, last name, email address. And that's it. That's the only only effort I have to do as an ambassador. I just have to write in to the platform and I became an ambassador. If I became an ambassador, I will receive from time to time or a mail in my mailbox or notification on the app. So like you saw, perhaps I didn't have to link my uh, social media networks to the platform. I didn't have to put any password. So it's a very, very light uh, way of, um, of uh, becoming an ambassador. So I get in this case, the mail, but the flow I show is just the same uh, online if you have an app. So I receive a small mail and this is what we say a bit the introduction, like, hey, Patrick, last time 500 people saw our video. Thanks to your efforts, we have something new. It would be great if you can discover and share it. Okay, I'm interested. Next step is I come into the environment. I can look at the content. I can see the video first. I can see who shared it before me, but in a compliant way, I have all the legal stuff who created it. And in this case, I can share this piece of content on my LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. It's up to the company to define on what social media channels ambassadors can share the content. We work with LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, WhatsApp, mail, and uh, WeChat will come as well. Uh, you see how many times it's been shared. In this time, I already shared it. That's why there's these errors. I can update my profile, but there's no obligation whatsoever. I can basically stay as neutral as uh, I want. I can give feedback. And this is the place where the company can give inspiration to the ambassador when they share. Like, if you share, why don't you use these hashtags? Or if you share, why don't you add something personal as a comment? So what happens? I read the content, I think the content is interesting, I click, the system will uh, connect to Facebook, no login needed. This is prepared for me, I can just put something personal on it and I post it on my Facebook. This is the only thing an ambassador has to do, it comes back to the same environment and I can do the same on LinkedIn. Easy as hell, everybody can do this. So that's the part of the ambassador. Let's go very quickly into the back office of the administrator. And what you see here is basically all the campaigns that's been sent out by, uh, by a company. And there's already some results popping up. And uh, the thing is, every single campaign gives you different results and you learn step by step uh, what is happening. In this case, there's, there's a message that's been sent out. That was this one. And the question was to spread the news Atlas Copco um, understood VB with 3D printing instead of Corona. It's a Flemish one, obviously. You see that they used some filters. They sent it to the Dutch people, all the internal external ambassadors, and everybody was interested in ABC. In this case, they sent the message to 184 people. 106 people opened the mail or reacted on the notification, which is 58%. We will give you insights on what day and time you should send out campaigns to get a high uh, response rate. Out of the 106, there are 69 people that they saw this mail and they said, I'm interested. This is what we call, so this is in this case, 65%. This is your internal relevancy. I ask something to my coworker, is at least a coworker interested? That's the first step in this case for 65%, which is basically the average on our platform. 69 people came to this plat to this environment and out of the 69, there's 84% that, that said, I'm not only going to read it, I'm going to share it. This is what we call the uber relevancy. Your content is interesting and so interesting that they want to share it. 
which is great news. 84%, by the way, good result. 58 people shared 82 times, meaning that they shared on different platforms. You can see here on what different channels they've been uh, uh, sharing it. Uh, so this gives you an insight on your social media savviness of your coworkers. But the most important thing is 58 people shared 82 times, and the result is that 812 people, thanks to Patrick sharing um, a piece of content, um, came back to your environment to read or discover the content, which is often also um, vacature or whatever, meaning that for every single person, there's almost 10 people coming back to your website. So the higher this figure, the higher your external relevancy is. So basically what this shows you is, it shows you what in Flemish, we call it intern draagvlak, internal relevancy. I create content, is this content interesting? Do they like it? And this shows you the external relevancy. If I create impact, is it also interesting for the public, for the outside world? And obviously, the ideal world is you create content with a high internal impact and with a high external impact. Now, I'm go not going to go through the whole platform because you can see per ambassador what everybody this does, but also a very GDPR compliant. But the most important thing is that campaign after campaign, you see the results and we get we give feedback because what you see here, for instance, is that once you start creating visuals, content, that is not authentic because I was just talking about authenticity. This is not really authentic picture. This is a, a stock picture. You will see that the impact will go low. It will be much lower. The impact is 2.7, meaning that kind of content, this kind of content, people don't like to see it on social media. So the, the, the purpose of social media is not only to make it very easy to engage coworkers to spread your content, but the second thing is it learns you as a communicator what type of messages I need to bring in order to create valuable impact, uh, long-term impact. Uh, and I think I just made it in 20 minutes, as far as I understand. So, up. Super. Thank you, Patrick. Let's see if there are some questions in the chat. I used it once with a client. It's very great. So. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we have, we, by the way, we, we the, 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 one of the questions we often have is, is, is it something that is, um, does it create impact or does it have an effect on every kind of industry or uh, company? Um, what we see right now is that with uh, 50 ambassadors, you create a lot of impact. Um, so you don't need to be a big international company. Uh, you need to just have, uh, I mean, you can, if you have a company with 10 people, you don't have to use a, a system, which is quite obvious. But if you have a company with uh, 100 people, it becomes really interesting. And I just saw a question from Anne van Houten. The company chooses the languages or is it only available in Dutch and English? No, we are also multilingual, um, like uh, Eatroger. Uh, we work with companies, international companies, uh, or companies like, more specifically, companies in Belgium, because in Belgium you have companies with French, Dutch, and English, or even uh, German-speaking people. So the company chooses the languages they want to uh, distribute the content uh, in. Voila. Okay, thank you, Anne. Yunus, practical platform, congrats. One question, if I open the mail through my mobile phone, when I click on share uh, on LinkedIn, does it open the LinkedIn app or a LinkedIn website on my phone's browser? Um, it normally connects to the LinkedIn app. Um, so normally you go immediately into your uh, LinkedIn uh, and the same with, uh, with, with uh, the others. Uh, I was wondering, Gil, Gila or Gila is wondering uh, about the pricing. Well, the pricing depends on the number of ambassadors and administrators. We have a pricing that starts, uh, we have a proof of concept of 50 ambassadors. We have pricing for 100, 250, 500 and more. Um, the basic pricing starts at 5,600 euros for a full year, meaning that includes the workshop, the support, the platform, unlimited um, uh, use of the platform and our support 
And if you just because the, the question of the pricing is interesting, um, I can just share you that, for instance, uh, Atlas Copco, which uh, I was just showing you, and I showed you because I, I have the permission to show this. Um, with one campaign, they hired 25 people. If you know what the cost is of hiring one person, and you see the investment of a platform like Social Cedar, um, that's quite some return on investment, uh, Gita. Good question. Philippe van der Neyende, can you share content directly from uh, internal SharePoint sites? You can share all the content which is publicly available. Because the meaning is that from the outside world, you have to be able to click and go, go back to the to, to content. So it can be blog, movies, uh, YouTube, Vimeo, LinkedIn, Facebook posts, third-party content. Uh, but it has to be it has to be publicly available. Uh, and SharePoint, uh, if uh, but you specifically say internal SharePoint, then internal SharePoint uh, with no access will not be possible to share. I have a question. Sorry, Stephanie. Uh, me too. Huh? But, uh, yeah, you can go ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> oh, ladies first. Ladies first. Okay. Yes, Patrick. I was wondering in these workshops, does it? I'm always interested in the change management. I'm, yeah. Um, do you then also identify like who could be the, the pioneers and your role models or? Yes. 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 Uh, it's, that's a really good question because the methodology of getting people. Um, on board is a bit different than with Meet Roger. I mean, Roger, they do it with the Big Bang. We don't do it with the Big Bang. We do it just the opposite way. We will always ask to, cut to, to go to the first believers because it's always the same. If somebody falls in the street and the first person that helps that person is for me, the real is not for me, but that's the real leader, and then all the rest will follow. So we always try to define the 1%. I was just saying the 1%. Mm -hmm. What are the people that already drive the company now? They will become your power ambassadors and then eventually even a day afterwards you can send out an invitation to everybody but if you just say like hey patrick and stephanie are already ambassadors would you like to join them you will see that there's many more people that will say yes and do the companies know their one percent easily uh they at least know i don't know whether they know the full one percent but at least most of the companies they say like okay we have about 10 15 20 people that we can ask immediately and even mm -hmm. that even for really big companies it's mm -hmm. already enough to uh to 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 make it work all right thank you and by the way just uh, another question one of the change management <laughs> In Flemish, they call it open door intrappen, um, but it's mm -hmm. really important from the start that you have management on board. Huh? If management says no, forget it. It doesn't work. Sure. Hans. Yes, my question. First of all, Patrick, I liked the uh, APC, the Ambassador Program Canvas. It was the first time I saw that. Um, um, I like it. Um, I was wondering, is there a, a link between the the data of your campaigns and the, and the sales. Uh, for instance, I have more ambassadors. Uh, you can see they're more sharing uh, certain content. Is that product selling better because yeah. of social cedar? Can you well, actually extract that from your data? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we, uh, Great. we have something new. I didn't show it, but we have something new, which is a, we call it conversion tracker. Mm -hmm. meaning that you can go one step further and you could even use it. We have one company that uses it in their um, online sales uh, you know, environment where they use ambassadors to promote products. Now, it's a bit, this is really social selling. And so this has nothing, this has nothing to do with, with um, employer branding. But even that we can detect, we can say like, okay, Patrick was talking about this company. They wanted to the company and thanks to Patrick, there's somebody that bought a perfume, perf perfume yeah. or whatever. Um, or uh, we can link it to recruitment, like Patrick mm -hmm. sh shared uh, an open position. Thanks to Patrick, there's two people that applied, that really applied, not only seen, yeah. but applied, meaning that you can start calculating the return on the return on ambassadors, basically. Yeah. Okay. That was the question. Exactly. Um, perfect. Um, next, because I was hoping on a positive answer. Is there <laughs> a, can, can you install a reward program for that? Because if if I want more ambassadors, uh, yeah, it was maybe a maybe maybe I should yeah uh, reward people to well, to share the, content. But the, the 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 only thing that we 
at this moment see is first of all that most of the companies internally they are against this uh, specific rewarding mm -hmm. system it's against a bit their their policy um and because that that is the biggest the, the challenge it's a really good question but the challenge the challenge we have is is very widespread because you you, you have to know that for instance in germany the people, the companies, they use a neutral. I call we call it uh, an uh, anonym, anon, uh, how do you say it? Um, anonymous, anonymous uh, yeah. social seeder, because there the company policy doesn't even allow HR to see who does what. So it depends. Okay. So there, that's one hand shy, side the challenge. If you can't even say who shared what, how can you start incentivizing people? So it's going to be very difficult. So it depends on the level of privacy your company has. And not even we consent, on. Patrick. If if no. they consent, no. okay, no, no. And I even, didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's even, uh, different interpretations of GDPR, maybe. Well, uh, that depends uh, how uh, strong the GD, the, D, the DPO and G, uh, the GDPR yeah. officer in a company is, but sometimes they really are very, very. Uh, okay. But, because I was I was thinking ten score ten points and you get a free coffee or something like that. It's, it's I would do anything for a free coffee. I so, would do a lot of for a free coffee. The only thing <laughs> why we don't uh, have the uh, gamification directly in the platform is that our philosophy is to attract and evolve as many people as possible. So also the people with smaller uh, net networks. So mm -hmm. everybody should be in the community the same. Um, and so we are working with community incentives. Yeah, uh, okay. And most of the companies, I would say 90% of the cases, the company, the company, they completely agree. Uh, one of the things, for instance, is that more and more companies, they link LinkedIn training to ambassadorship. I can see the relevance. Yeah, okay or social media training uh, in a broader yeah. context uh, yes yeah. so it enhances each other and it, it becomes, it does. becomes it does. stronger yeah. no no but it does i think that, 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 that i don't we don't like to call it gamification that's the only thing because in a in a community you shouldn't have a competition you should have a situation where everybody just all together do, do when everybody does an effort we create a big results uh, but that, that doesn't that doesn't mean that we that you don't need, need to give back to your ambassadors, obviously. All right. Okay. It's clear, Patrick, you can talk hours about this. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but we have to wrap up. I know, I know. <laughs> so, thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you a lot. It's a, I think you give great evidence that it can have a strategic impact on a company. So thanks for that. And, um, and thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Answer Stephanie, and if there's any questions, obviously everybody can come back to to us, and I will again be in all the uh, give my enthusiasm and share whatever I have. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. Right. Thank you, Patrick. That's clear. Thank you. So, See you um, later. okay, that was it for today, then, right? Yeah, guess so. It's a wrap. It is the last episode of 2022. Stephanie, shouldn't we at least say something against uh, to our audience? Wish them the best okay. Christmas they ever had or something and uh, our best wishes for the, the next year. And uh, maybe yeah. we'll be back next year. Who knows? Yes, who knows? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you all. Bye. See you all. Uh...